In 1945, a group of workers unintentionally uncovered an early Christian tomb that contained a large jar. The jar held 13 manuscripts that were leather-bound and consisted of 48 different works. The majority of these works are Gnostic, promoting the idea that mystical knowledge leads to salvation. The Gospel of Thomas is among these manuscripts and teaches that humans are souls trapped in physical bodies and can only achieve ascension through gaining true knowledge. Jesus is regarded as the Redeemer who imparted this knowledge to his chosen disciples, including Thomas. Rather than narrating a story, the Gospel of Thomas is a collection of about 114 sayings attributed to Jesus. Had these teachings been incorporated into the modern Bible, the message may have been more focused on the inherent power of each individual. Most spiritual traditions ultimately lead to the same ascension through self-discovery. The opening words of the document read, These are the secret words that Jesus, the Living One, spoke, and Didymus Judas Thomas wrote down. And he said, Whoever finds the interpretation of these sayings shall never taste death. Let not him who seeks desist until he finds. When he finds, he will be troubled. When he is troubled, he will marvel, and he will reign over the universe. The secret lies in the interpretation of the sayings themselves. Finding the true answers can be troubling, as they often contradict what one has been taught. However, realizing the power one holds can lead to experiencing heaven on earth. The Gospel of Thomas has been removed from the Bible, with some claiming that its teachings about Jesus do not align with the New Testament and are not necessary for the Bible's work. The teachings in the Gospel of Thomas explain manifestation, consciousness, and oneness. If we discover writings attributed to Jesus that align with his other teachings, we tend to believe they are authentic. Very, very powerful text. The lost gospel of Thomas is powerful because it is believed to be the actual words of Jesus as he was teaching those around him how to use the power of human emotion in his life. However, if the sayings contradict other teachings, they may have been removed due to concerns about their validity rather than being sacred truths for all. If the idea that each person possesses the same divine power as Jesus had been emphasized, it could have had a profound impact on our understanding of life. What happened to our knowledge? Well, this is a very good question. And the answer is this. In our Western tradition, and I'm, when I say Western, I'm assuming that we are of the Judeo-Christian tradition. Although we are unique individuals, we are all part of a single consciousness, manifesting in different forms. The Gospel of Thomas contains sayings of Jesus that may have various interpretations. The Gospel of Thomas, if you have a copy of the Gospel of Thomas, this is verse 106, translated from the Nag Hammadi Library. It says, when you make the two thought and emotion one it's saying when you make your thought and your emotion one look at what happens you will say to the mountain mountain move away and the mountain will move away for example in verse 3 of the gospel of thomas it says that if those who lead you say to you that the kingdom is in the sky then the birds of the sky will precede you. If they say to you that it is in the sea, then the fish will precede you. Rather, the kingdom is inside of you, and it is outside of you. When you come to know yourselves, you will become known, and you will realize that it is you who are the sons of the living Father. But if you do not know yourselves, you dwell in poverty, and it is you who are that poverty. The teaching emphasizes the importance of recognizing that all power comes from within oneself. 
and that believing otherwise leads to a life where external forces have dominion. When one realizes that they are part of the one consciousness that permeates everything, they can live a rich and ascended life. This is because everything in the outside world is manifested from within oneself. Failure to recognize this inner power can result in a life of poverty. The belief that outside events and people control one's life prevents them from expressing the richness that they are entitled to. Verse 27 says, If you do not fast from the world, you will not find the Father's domain. Which means, if we don't reject the things that trouble us and have faith in our internal power to make a difference, we will keep encountering the same reality in our lives. Verse 50, if they say to you, where did you come from? Say to them, we came from the light, the place where the light came into being on its own accord and established itself and became manifest through their image. If they say to you, is it you? The word light represents the origin of humans as the consciousness of each person manifested in physical form. It is the all-encompassing force that exists within us and manifests as our activity and awareness. Verse 77, Jesus said, I am the light which is above them all. It is I who am the all from me. Did they all come forth and unto me did they all extend a piece of wood and I am there. Lift up the stone and you will find me there. This verse describes how the universal consciousness resides in all things, and anything that exists in it also exists within all other entities. Verse 113, his disciples said to him, when will the kingdom come? Jesus said, it would not come by waiting for it. It would not be a matter of saying, here it is, or there it is. Rather, the kingdom of the Father is spread out upon the earth, and men do not see it. This explains that the power within each individual has always existed, but has been forgotten. This consciousness is an inherent part of all things, including humans, and doesn't need to be waited upon to be experienced. Greg Braden explained the power of thought and emotion to manifest as originally thought in verses 48 and 106 of the Gospel of Thomas. Page out of the Gospel of Thomas. So we know that this, this ancient gospel actually existed. Braden emphasizes that in order to harness the power of the divine matrix in our lives, we must first understand how it works through science. However, to effectively communicate with the divine matrix, we must also learn the language that it recognizes, which comes from our culture, history, and past. The speaker cites Jesus and other great masters as examples of individuals who understood this language and were able to use it to tap into the energy field. The language is said to be universal and can be found in various religious and spiritual traditions. Verse 106, when you make the two one, you will become the sons of man. And when you say, mountain, move away, it will move away. This is an invitation to seek unity and wholeness within oneself, as well as with the divine or the universe. When you make the two one, refers to the unification of the inner and outer aspects of oneself or the spiritual and material dimensions of reality. When this unity is achieved, the passage suggests that one can tap into a powerful creative force that allows them to move mountains or accomplish seemingly impossible things. In this sense, the passage can be seen as a call to awaken to one's true nature and potential and to recognize the interconnectedness of all things. 
when you can marry your thought and your emotion into one single potent force, that is when you have the power to speak to the world. This next verse was so important that it was recorded at least three different times in the same gospel. Verse 48, it states that if two make peace between themselves in the same house, they shall say to the mountain, move away, and it will move. This emphasizes the power of aligning one's thoughts and emotions by using the metaphor of a house. When thought and emotion become harmonious, one can move mountains, illustrating the great power that comes from aligning the two. In a completely different verse, how powerful it is to marry thought and emotion. Wondering how to intertwine thought and emotion? It's Jesus' law of attraction. In the Bible we have today, what we have is the condensed version of John, chapter 16, versions 23 to 24. Whatsoever he asks the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. But this verse was missing two key sentences on how to properly ask Jesus. This was the translation in the original Aramaic. All things that you ask straightly, directly from inside my name, you will be given. Ask without hidden motive and be surrounded by your answer. Be enveloped by what you desire. Let your gladness be full. Look at what it's saying. It's not saying a word. One should immerse themselves in the feeling of their desired outcome as if it has already happened in order to align their thoughts and emotions and speak the language recognized by the field of energy. By doing so, one can manifest their desires, whether it be a perfect relationship or healing for a loved one. The key is to merge thought and emotion and to feel as if the desired outcome has already been achieved. These are the hidden teachings of the Bible, the Gospel of Thomas, and the powerful law of attraction.